So in today's video, we are going to see a very important subject uh, that is optical communication. We'll be seeing all major concepts of optical communication. We'll see about the optical fibers, single uh, modded, multi-modded, what are its various characteristics, what are the various characteristics of optical fibers in general. Okay, so uh, first let's see what is actually optical communication. Optical communication means we are actually using uh, light energy as a source or uh, as a medium, you can say, for transferring of information. So in optical communication, what we are actually doing is uh, the energy, which is generally form, uh, generally in the form called uh, electrical energy, is converted into optical energy, and then it is converted back to the electrical energy. So in the uh, in between the electrical energies, you can find an optical energy. So optical energy is actually we are transmitting. In the receiver side it is converted back to electrical energy so here optical energy or light is used as a medium for transmitting of information so if you see the general block diagram of uh, optical communication system you can see there is an information source and then there is a transducer the transducer will send the uh, electrical signals and then there is an optical source the optical source means some uh, sort of source which is able to generate light in proportion with the information sent okay so uh, we will be sending actually an electrical signal in accordance with an electrical signal light has to be generated so we use an optical source and then this light now this is converted to optical energy here so here from here onwards then light we are dealing with so we have a or we need an optical channel and through which we will be sending this light or light energy then it is detected at the optical detector and this detected energy will be in the form of again electrical energy here okay so in between it uh, or in in between this electrical energy and this electrical energy there is totally light is getting transmitted so after optical detection we will be getting the proportionate or corresponding electrical energy which is received at the electrical received side and it is passed to the destination so this is a very simple block diagram of an optical communication now let us see uh, each of this now uh, since we are dealing with optical communication we are interested in these areas optical source optical channel and optical detector right so the optical source means it should be uh, some source which is able to generate light proportional to the electrical energy. So generally used optical sources are either laser or LED, light emitting diode or laser. The next optical channel means the medium of transmitting this light energy. So that is nothing but our optical fiber and this optical fiber is actually a medium uh, through which we transmit our light and the principle of operation of this optical fibers is TIR or total internal reflection. Then the detector means it is generating electrical energy proportional to the light energy being received. So that is photodiode or pin diode is being used generally. Okay, so this is the basic structure of an optical communication. Now before going into the optical fiber, let's see how the, that is, what are the various properties associated with the light that are angle of incidence, angle of reflection, then what is refractive index, Snell's law, all those things we are going to see. Next we are going to see some of the very important concepts of light when heating a medium, there are various angles and all, we are going to see all of those. First one is angle of incidence, angle of incidence is the angle at which the light is incidenting or striking a surface. If you see this, uh, this is the surface uh, and here light is incidenting at an angle of fiber. Okay, so that angle is called angle of incidence. Then what is angle of reflection? Angle of reflection means uh, the angle at which the light is getting reflected. Okay, it's called angle of reflection. Next. 
we are going to see about refraction refraction means it is actually the bending of light when light travels from one medium to another medium here you can see this is uh, one medium this is medium one this is medium two okay and here you can see the light is getting bended when it is entering the medium two this bending of light when it enters from one medium to another medium generally uh, the refractive index of this medium one n1 is greater than n2 okay so anyway that bending of light is called refraction when light is entering from medium one to medium two it it is bend right so this bending is called refraction next let us see what is refractive index of a medium so refractive index or refractive index of a medium is actually the measure of refraction how much refraction uh, of light that medium can cause that is the refractive index of that medium so this refractive index is actually for a medium not about light this is actually the property of a medium so how much it can cause the bending of light so when light is entering from one medium to this medium how much it can cause the bending of light that measure is called a refractive index of that medium okay i hope it is clear now uh, in terms of uh, equation you can write the refractive index eta or we generally use uh, n to represent refractive index n it is the speed of light in air to the speed of light in that medium will be the refractive index of that particular medium so if you want to find the uh, refractive index of a particular medium take the speed of light in air that is c by the speed of light in that particular medium will give you the refractive index of that medium i hope it is clear next moving on to the very important concepts first one is snell's law consider that light is entering from medium 1 to medium 2 medium 1 uh, in the medium 1 it is incidenting at an angle of phi 1 and it is getting refracted at an angle of phi 2 this is the phi 2 and this central dotted line is nothing but the normal line okay normal or a perpendicular okay you draw perpendicular and uh, this angle is the angle of incidence phi 1 this is the angle of refraction phi 2 with respect to the normal and this is this is the interface of these two mediums medium 1 and medium 2 the refractive index of medium 1 is n1 refractive index of medium 2 is n2 and snell's law according to snell's law snell's law we can write n1 sin phi 1 is equal to n2 sin phi 2 where n1 is the refractive index of medium 1 in which the angle uh, in which the light is incidenting and the, at an angle of phi 1 and the light is getting refracted at an angle of phi 2 in medium 2 where the refractive index is n2 so you can write n1 sin phi 1 is equal to n2 sin phi 2 now here consider the angle phi 2 is equal to 90 degree okay so what will happen when angle phi 2 is equal to 90 degree means this light will will actually this phi 2 will extend you can see it will extend from this portion to this portion that it is it will be 90 degree okay so when phi 2 is nine entire 90 degree then this light will actually travel through this interface between two mediums i've actually drawn here a dark line so the light will actually follow this path okay when phi 2 is 90 degree so how this equation will get modified it will be now phi 2 is 90 degree so n1 sin phi 1 is equal to n2 into sin uh, phi 2 is 90 so sin 90 is 1 so it will be n1 sin phi 1 is equal to n2 right i've written it here also n1 sin phi 1 is equal to n2 now and you can write the equation for phi 1 as phi 1 is equal to sin inverse of n2 by n1 very simple right take the division of n2 and 
from here take n1 so n2 by n1 so if you need to find phi1 take sine inverse of n2 by n1 and this angle is called critical angle okay critical angle is the angle of incidence of a particular medium that is we are actually writing the equation for phi1 which is the angle of incidence so critical angle is that angle of incidence for which the angle of refraction is 90 degree okay so this refraction will be now 90 degree actually you can draw a normal here right this phi 2 okay so critical angle is that angle of incidence which is phi 1 for which the angle of refraction will be 90 degree okay and the light will travel through the interface of these two mediums or the light will get refracted and takes the path which is the interface between the two mediums okay if such a traveling of light happens or such a bending of light happens then that angle of incidence phi 1 is called we call it as phi c or critical angle so phi c is equal to sine inverse of n2 by n1 okay so critical angle is uh, if you want to write in the form of a definition it is the angle at which the refracted light travel along the interface between two different medium this is two different mediums and the light is traveling between the interface between two different these two mediums and that angle of incidence is called critical angle okay so phi c is equal to sine inverse of n1 n2 by n1 is the critical angle this is a very important equation that's why i'm explaining it this much of time and what happens if this angle of incidence is greater than phi c or critical angle see now uh, this light is incidenting at phi c consider this incidenting at phi c and the light the refracted light is taking this path if this phi c is now increased more means what will happen the light will get refracted towards the same medium or we can call it as total internal reflection okay i think you can't see this portion of the board i'll write it here it is total internal reflection okay so this is actually the condition for total internal reflection means that is for total internal reflection to happen the angle of incidence phi 1 should be greater than phi c phi c okay so if your angle of incidence phi 1 is greater than phi c your light will bend or light will get refracted you can call it as a refraction or it will uh, you can call it as reflection because it is reflecting towards the same medium so the light will anyway will get reflected towards the same medium or it will return to the same medium and it will cause total internal reflection so this is actually the uh, principle or this is the basic criteria for total internal reflection the angle of incidence in simple words the angle of incidence should be greater than critical angle okay, you can also say it is greater than or equal to critical angle okay but correctly it is angle of incidence should be greater than critical angle for total internal reflection to take place and this is the basic principle of working of optical fibers inside the optical fibers inside the core region of the optical fiber you can see that the light is getting total internal reflected and it is following the core path optical fibers are actually optical channels which is used for uh, traveling of light or actually uh, used to transmit light act as a medium so this is a small uh, figure of optical fiber it generally consists of an inner core then covering that there is a cladding then there is an outer buffer so core is actually the inner region through which the light is actually getting propagated through total internal reflection now the purpose of cladding is to confine the light within the core region so 
the refractive index of core is normally taken greater than that of cladding. So if N1 is a refractive index of core, N2 is that of cladding, N1 should be greater than N2 for light to confined within the core region. So light is actually propagating through core region. Cladding just confines light within the core region and buffer is acting as a protective cover for this optical fiber. Okay. And their optical fiber. Now an example of an optical fiber is PCS that is plastic clad silica. It's a type of optical fiber in which plastic clad silica, silica means glass. So core is glass, core region is glass. And cladding region is plastic. Okay. So that is plastic clad silica. So core is silica or glass. Cladding is plastic. Okay. So this is a simple example of optical fiber. There is a lot of other examples also. But just to make you familiarize with this core, core cladding structure. This is PCS. Okay. Next we are going to see about angle of acceptance and numerical aperture. For that we are using this figure. Here you can see. There is a, this, uh, we are not included the buffer. This N2 is a region corresponding to cladding. Inside, there is N1, which is core region. So, N2 is actually the refractive index of cladding. N1 is the refractive index of core. The light is incidenting at an angle of theta, it is A, okay, theta A. And it is incidenting from air, where the refractive index is taken as N0, okay. This is N0, okay. N0 and it is incidenting this interface of optical fiber and air and it is in getting into the core region and if it is incidenting uh, inside the core region or the core cladding interface, if this light when it enters the core cladding interface or it enters a core region and if it strikes this core cladding interface at an angle of theta c only then the total internal reflection will take place okay so that is a concept uh, of this figure now we are going to the angle of acceptance what is angle of acceptance it is the maximum angle to the optical fiber axis such that light may enter in order to propagate okay so see here this central dotted line is optical fiber axis okay so if light is incidenting at a maximum angle of this much or angle of acceptance only then light will enter properly to have total internal reflection otherwise total internal reflection will not take place and this angle of acceptance is called theta a so theta a is a maximum angle at which the light should incident this optical fiber axis in order to properly propagate through the optical fiber or in order to have total internal reflection within the optical fiber. So that maximum angle is called angle of acceptance. Okay, so this theta A is the maximum angle here or it is the angle of acceptance. If the uh, angle of incidence to this optical fiber axis is greater than theta what, what will happen the total internal reflection will not take place so some of the information will get lost okay so theta a i will explain to once again theta a is the maximum angle to the or maximum angle of incidence to this optical fiber axis which is this such that light may enter the optical fiber that is only if the light is incidenting at this angle the light will enter properly to this optical fiber otherwise it will get dispersed some somewhere uh, some of the information may get lost okay so these things can happen so that is the maximum angle called angle of acceptance and if the angle theta is greater than theta a means if angle is greater than acceptance angle means tir won't take place properly total internal reflection will not take place properly Okay, next is numerical aperture. This is a very, very important thing. What is numerical aperture? It is a measure of light collecting ability of the fiber. So, we, in order to characterize the optical fiber's light collecting ability, we use the term numerical aperture, generally denoted by N A. In some question papers, also you can see this term, which is numerical aperture. 
Now, this numerical aperture is actually relating the refractive indices of the core and the cladding region. Okay. Now, if you see here, here, if you see, N0 sin theta A is equal to N1 sin 90 minus theta C. Okay. We know that, see here, according to this is nothing but Snell's law. Okay. See here, this, this figure, you can see a triangle here. See, this one is a triangle. This is normal, which is 90 degree. This is, this angle is, we have taken it as theta C. Now, what is this angle? I'll mark it as red. And that angle is 90 minus theta C, right? Right, is there any confusion? No, right? If you take this triangle inside the core region, you can see one angle is theta C, this angle is 90 and this angle is 90 minus theta C. So according to Snell's law, we can write, what is Snell's law? N1, consider this medium, if the refractive indices is N1, N1 sin theta 1 is equal to N2 sin theta 2, in which the refraction is taking place. Here, the refractive index of this medium is N0. So, N0 sin theta A is equal to, in this medium, it is actually getting to the core region where the refractive index is N1. So, N1 sin of this angle which is 90 minus theta C. See, this is, don't get confused that from where this equation come, it is nothing but Snell's law we are applying. Okay, so that's why we are studying this Snell's law at the beginning. So, N0 sin theta A is equal to N1 sin 90 minus theta C. You can write 90 minus, uh, sin 90 minus theta C as cos theta C. So, N1 uh, cos theta C. In turn, you can write N0 sin theta A is equal to N1. Replace this cos theta C with square root of 1 minus sin square theta C because you know that sin square theta C plus cos square theta C is equal to 1. So, from that you will get, that is you can replace cos theta C as square root of 1 minus sin square theta C. Again, this sin theta C, have you seen this sin theta C term anywhere? Yes, it is in the critical angle equation. So, you can replace it with the critical angle term N2 by N1, where you have written theta C is equal to sin inverse of N2 by N1. So, sin theta c will be n2 by n1 simply and sin square theta c will be n2 by n1 the whole square very simple right so substitute that in that in the position of sin square theta c so you'll get n2 by n1 the whole square again if you simplify it you will get this term which is actually the numerical aperture uh, measure measuring value which is n0 sin theta a is the numerical aperture okay so replace this with numerical aperture or n a is equal to n1 square minus n2 square the whole raised to 1 by 2 or it is square root of n1 square minus n2 square I'll write that also you can also write this term as is equal to n1 square n2 square the square root of n1 square minus n2 square Okay, so this is the numerical aperture. So this term that is N0 sin theta A corresponds to the numerical aperture. And the value is this N1 square minus N2 square square root or square root of N1 square minus N2 square. Okay, so this is numerical aperture. So we have discussed about very important concepts of angle of acceptance and numerical aperture. The next topics are relative refractive index, the type of rays within the optical fiber core and the very important normalized frequency. Okay, first one is relative refractive index. It is actually a term which is a relative uh, refractive indices between the core and the cladding. It relates the refractive indices of core and cladding region. And it is given by delta. Why? Because uh, in a lot of uh, textbooks and a uh, lot of equations, you can see this delta. So, you should know that what is actually delta. 
Delta is a relative refractive index term. It is n1 square minus n2 square by 2n1 square. You can also write it as 1 minus n2 by n1. And you can replace the numerical aperture equation with delta. That is n1 to delta the whole raised to 1 by 2. Okay, sometimes you will be seeing this equation. And sometimes you have to, you will be given this term to find the numerical aperture. Then you should be knowing that how to put the delta to find the numerical aperture. Okay, next we have to see about the type of rays within the core region. I have actually adjusted the port for you to see this entirely. Okay, there are two types of rays, meridional rays and skew rays. The rays which pass through the core axis. So, there is a core axis, right? So, there is a core. This is a core. There is a core axis. The rays which pass through this core axis is called meridional rays and the numerical aperture of those uh, rays is actually the same as uh, which we have discussed n0 sin theta a, where theta a is the angle of uh, acceptance n0 is the uh, angle of incidence from the medium to the optical fiber. For that medium what is the refractive index if it is air then n0 is the refractive index of air or vacuum. Okay. Then next one is skew rays. These rays doesn't pass through the core axis. It doesn't cut the core axis. And for that the numerical aperture is N0 sin theta s into cos alpha. There is another angle term now coming which is alpha. I'll explain it. But before that what is theta as? Theta as is the uh, is actually the angle of incidence to the optical fiber. Okay. So, earlier we have told it as angle of acceptance. Now, for skew rays, it is actually the angle uh, with which the light is entering the optical fiber itself. Since it is skew rays, we call it as theta A S. Okay. Then, what is alpha? Alpha is the angle between the angle of incidence and the normal to that point. Okay. So, this is theta is and this will be alpha okay so that is cos alpha now uh, so the numerical aperture of the numerical aperture of this q rays is na is equal to n0 thi, uh, sin theta is into cos alpha and for meridional and skew rays uh, the angle of acceptance of skew rays is greater than the meridional rays okay theta a s is greater than theta a theta a s is actually the angle of acceptance itself for the skew rays it is greater than theta a s that is the angle of acceptance of meridional rays that is a general case next one we are going to see about and very very important term which is normalized frequency okay the normalized frequency, why it is important, important because its value actually decides whether the fiber is a single model fiber or a multi-model fiber. That is whether it can uh, carry more than one modes or more than one paths of light within it or whether it can carry only a single path or a single mode. This normalized frequency's value actually decides. The normalized frequency is generally denoted by V which is equal to 2 pi by lambda into A into numerical aperture where A is the radius of the core. Then lambda is the wavelength, Na is the numerical aperture. And in terms of again relative refractive index delta we can substitute it as 2 pi by lambda into A into N1 2 delta the whole raised to 1 by 2. We have simply substituted Na in terms of this equation. Okay. Now, how it varies between single mode and multi mode fiber is that if the value of V, that is the normalized frequency, is lying in between 0 less than or equal to V less than or equal to Vc, where the value of Vc is 2.405, then it is a single model fiber. Or in simply or simple words, we can say if the value of the normalized frequency is less than or equal to 2.405 it is a single mode fiber optical fiber if the value is greater than vc which is 2.405 then it is a multi-modal fiber okay next we are going to see about step index 
graded index then the properties of single mode and multi mode fibers next we are going to see about very very important step index and graded index fiber okay so if you want the complete note of this uh, video i've uploaded it in the facebook page of ac electronics as images please do download that images and uh, please uh, make use of for your reference okay so uh, these handwritten notes i have uh, uploaded okay the first one we are going to see is step index fiber okay step index means the index is actually following a step path okay so there is a core region and then there is a cladding region right outside there is a cladding region inside the core there is a uniform refractive index and it is then abruptly reducing to uh, the cladding region again the cladding region is also following a uniform refractive index and if you see the refractive index profile you can see a step like structure because we know that uh, in core region the refractive index is generally more so there is a higher step then following that is when the radius of the core uh, that is uh, in the outside region of the core you can see this following a next step which is n2 okay so this is how the refractive index varies it is actually abruptly reducing or decreasing or jumping to the next refractive index at the core cladding interface okay so from n1 it abruptly jumps to n2 here also it is n2 okay so this entire step is n1 the next step is the cladding index refractive uh, the cladding refractive index uh, region in this figure it is n2 i hope it is clear okay so entire core region is having a uniform or same refractive index and entire cladding region is having the next refractive index which is normally taken uh, lesser than that of the core region so that is a step index optical uh, fiber uh, profile okay now if you are moving on to the graded index means inside the core region also so if this is a core region the uh, the refractive index of this core region is not uniform okay it sometimes follows a triangular path means the refractive index will be more towards the center of the core and it diminishes towards the edges uh, of the core sometimes it will be a triangular profile that is we are talking about the refractive index profile of the core region sometimes it will be a parabolic structure that is towards the uh, the center of the core it will be higher and it diminishes or it reduces towards the edges of the core and also towards the cladding region okay so if such a profile is seen that is a non uniform uh, refractive index in the core region also and in the cladding region also okay so that type of refractive index profile if seen then that fiber is called a graded index fiber so here the refractive indices is actually following these profiles step index and graded index means refractive index okay so here for the case of uh, graded index the refractive index of core varies over its cross section that it is not uniform it is more towards the center and least towards the edges and similarly and same as that for the cladding region also it is not uniform throughout the entire cladding region it is diminishing towards the edges okay and if you see the refractive index profile if you write in terms of the radius the n of r that is refractive index is n1 if r is less than a that is within this region of a it is n1 and if it is greater than or equal to a from a and towards if it is greater than a it is n2 so it is following only single refractive index in this region and single refractive index in this region so that is a step index fiber and the number of modes if you want to calculate for a step index fiber then ms for a step index the number of modes is v square by 2 where v is the normalized frequency this equation is very important okay please note this down i have included all the important equations okay next if you want to uh, write the uh, refractive index profile for a graded index fiber it is n of r is equal to n1 uh, 
into 1 minus 2 delta r by a the whole raised to alpha the whole raised to 1 by 2. n2 is equal to n1 into 1 minus 2 delta the whole raised to 1 by 2 where r is greater than or equal to a. So you can see it actually varies based on the parameters called alpha or the parameter called alpha which is the profile parameter of a graded index fiber. And this is how the profile varies for various values of alpha. Okay, so if alpha is infinity, this uh, graded index fiber will actually get converted into a step index fiber. The profile will be same as that of a step index one. Then if alpha is one, then it is a triangular profile. Then alpha is two, then it is a parabolic profile. The, here we are talking about the refractive index profile of the core region. Okay. Next, the number of modes is given by mg is equal to alpha by alpha plus 2 into v square by 2. So, this alpha is actually the profile uh, parameter or the profile factor of a graded index fiber. So, this is the step index and the graded index fiber. So, I, uh, I really hope that you have made a crystal clear idea about what is a step index fiber, what is a graded index fiber. We see about single mode and multi mode fiber. So single mode fibers generally have small core radius or diameter and it allows only one single path of light. Okay, So only one light path will flow through the or uh, travel through the single mode fiber. For the case of multi mode fiber, it will be having uh, generally larger core and it allows more than one or more than single path of light that is multiple paths of light with multiple modes now uh, what happens if more than one light path pass through single mode fiber means it causes modal dispersion so modal dispersion happens when more than one light path travel through a single mode fiber and in order to avoid that you have to reduce the diameter only then single path of light will flow through it or travel through it and for the case of uh, single mode fiber, we have seen this earlier. The normalized frequency is in between 0 to Vc or maximum 2.405 is the value for normalized frequency allowed. If it is greater than, it is actually a multimodal fiber. Then the minimum wavelength lambda minimum is equal to 2 pi A into Na by uh, 2.405. So here, this is actually the uh, normalized frequency if it is for the case of a multi-mode fiber you have to substitute it as v here because for this case for single mode fiber it is 2.405 okay so the the minimum wavelength equation for a single mode fiber is lambda minimum is equal to 2 pi a into na by 2.405 where a is the radius of the core na is a numerical aperture now uh, the critical radius of curvature for having a single modded fiber that is how much a radius we can allow for a core to have a single mode fiber is calculated using this equation which is called critical radius of curvature uh, rc is equal to 20 lambda by n1 square minus n2 square the whole raised to 3 by 2 this is 3 by 2 into 2.748 minus 0 0.996 lambda by lambda minimum the whole raised to minus 3 Okay, where n1 is the core index, n2 is the gliding index, lambda is the wavelength. Again, lambda is the wavelength, lambda minimum is the minimum wavelength allowed for a single modded fiber. Now, moving on to the critical radius of curvature for a multi modded fiber, Rc is equal to 3, this is 3, okay, 3 n1 square pi by 4 pi n1 square minus n2 square, the whole raised to 3 by 2. Okay, so this is the uh, equation for the critical radius of curvature of a multimodal fiber. Next, we are going to see about optical sources and detectors. So, optical sources means they generate light uh, in accordance with the electrical energy coming. Okay, so we have seen in the initial block diagram about optical sources. The most commonly used optical sources are uh, LED and laser. So, LED generally we use for short distance low speed and they give monochromatic and non coherent light. Whereas in case of laser, we know that the light is more confined or it is more coherent. So here it is used for long distance and it is high speed and they give monochromatic coherent light. Now if you talk about the efficiency of a LED, now we are going to see about certain terms of connected to LED, right? Because it is uh, being used in practical case. 
most frequently. So efficiency of an LED, which is an internal quantum efficiency, eta int, is equal to RR into E by I, where RR is the radiative recombination rate. We know that in LED, light emitting, it is a diode. So the recombination ha happens. So the recombination rate into charge of an electron by current is the internal quantum efficiency. If you are noting, please note it, internal quantum efficiency. Now the internal power is given by P int is equal to internal quantum efficiency into I by E into H C by lambda, where H is a Planck's constant. C is the speed of light, lambda is the wavelength. External power, P external is equal to internal power by 4 into F into n square by nx square, where f is the transmission coefficient. Please note, f is a transmission coefficient and the value of f varies in between 0 to 1. It lies in between 0 and 1. Can have values between 0 and 1. n is the refractive index of the medium. nx is the refractive index of the LED crystal. Okay, so n by nx square. Next, about the coupling efficiency now what is actually coupling efficiency it is the uh, that is it is defining the amount of optical power coupled to the fiber from the led that is how much optical power the uh, the led can couple uh, within the optical fiber that is actually how efficient it is in coupling light inside the optical fiber the purpose of uh, uh, the purpose of uh, LED, that is a light sources, is actually to, uh, to pass on light to the optical fiber. So this light uh, emitting diodes generates light and it couples this generated light within the optical fiber for it to transmit, right? So how much it is efficient in coupling the light? To the optical fiber that is the coupling efficiency okay so eta c is equal to sine square theta a so that is n a square by n1 square minus n2 square or you can write it as n a by n0 square okay we have uh, we have seen the terms n n1 n2 and n0 so i hope this is clear next optical detectors we can generally use uh, photodiode or avalanche diode as Optical detectors. So these uh, detectors generate electrical energy corresponding to the light energy incident on them. And the efficiency of these detectors in general is given by eta d. The efficiency of detector is equal to electron generation rate by incident photon rate. That is how much efficient is it in generating electrons corresponding to the photon or light energy incidenting to it. That is Re by Rp, where Rp is the electron generation rate, Rp is the incident photon rate. Next, the responsivity of detectors. This uh, detector should be responsive. It should respond to the light incidenting on them. The responsivity is given by R is equal to Ip by P0, where Ip is the photon current, uh, P0 is the incident photon power. Okay. So that is responsivity. So we have seen all major terms in optical communication uh, generally about light also and about optical fibers also. We have discussed about step index, graded index, single mode, multi mode, normalized frequency, wavelength of a single mode fiber, all important terms we have actually discussed in this video. So this video is very, very, very important if you are preparing for gate exams, especially or ISRO exams or bar exam or DMRC or any cognitive examination because optical communication is very important and most probably this much of areas can only come in this examination and I've included all those areas and all the important notes not in a very theoretical manner but in an exam point of view. Okay, so I really hope that you found it useful. I'm telling it once again, if you want the notes of this uh, video, it is available in the, uh, the page, Facebook page of EC Electronics. I've shared that in the link, uh, that uh, link in the description. Okay, so uh, if you found it useful, please do give it a thumbs up and also share this video with maximum of friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. And also, thanks for watching. Keep on watching.